Chen Ji Lao took the lead in rushing to confront the baboons. However, suddenly, a portion of the aggressive man's body vanished, creating the illusion of him floating. Despite this, the baboon managed to successfully deflect Chen Ji Lao's sword strike. In response to an imminent attack from behind, Sally urgently warned Chen Ji Lao. It turned out that the genuine baboon had swiftly emerged from the rear of the young man, launching an assault. Reacting swiftly, Chen Ji Lao turned around and defended against the baboons that had materialized behind him. In an unexpected turn, the baboon disappeared, leaving Chen Ji Lao puzzled by the precarious situation. Unfortunately, this time, Chen Ji Lao couldn't evade the baboon's attack, resulting in a significant shoulder injury. Consequently, Chen Ji Lao's HP dropped by 300%. The system issued a warning that if the HP fell below 300, the quest would automatically fail. Babin advised Chen Ji Lao to give up, asserting that a healer with the Chen surname wouldn't stand a chance against him. Despite the suggestion, Chen Ji Lao was unwilling to surrender. The system then appeared and inquired if Chen Ji Lao wished to utilize a healing skill to address the identified wound. Chen Ji Liao willingly activated the healing ability, causing his body wounds to heal and the bleeding to cease. His HP was fully restored to 100%. However, other Babins ridiculed Chen Ju Lao, exposing that this young man was merely a healer. Babin urged Chen Ju Lao to depart, claiming that a healer wasn't worth his attention. Chen Ju Lao countered, suggesting that the baboon was afraid of embarrassment because he might lose to a healer. Enraged, the baboon showcased his shadow skills, vowing to unveil the genuine power of shadow swordsmanship. Following his declaration, the baboon conjured two additional shadows resembling himself. Chen Jia Lao became vigilant, realizing that his opponent could create illusions, making it appear as if there were three adversaries. Chen Ju Liao concluded that this shadow swordsmanship relied on creating duplicates for combat. Despite thinking Chen Ji Lao was just a mediocre healer, the baboon agreed to showcase the power of shadow swordsmanship before the young man's demise. Chen Jia Liao raised his sword, inviting the baboon to display that power. Quickly, Chen Ji Lao initiated another attack on the baboons. The clash between the two swords was intense, overwhelming both fighters. The baboon's shadow quickly attacked Chen Ji Liao again. Chen Ji Liao, in turn, swung his sword and countered the shadow's attacks. He realized that the agile shadow was challenging to handle, and there were still two more. As he turned to face the other baboons, one shadow had disappeared, and another was now behind Chen Jia Liao. The baboon claimed that Chen survived only due to luck. Chen Jia Liao dodged and jumped away, avoiding a sudden attack. The system appeared, congratulating Chen Jialao for gaining agility points, allowing him to dodge physical attacks for two seconds. Babin declared that the real game was beginning and summoned back the sword held by Chen Ji Liao. The baboons no longer underestimated Chen Ji Liao, and Baboon and his two clones prepared for a serious fight. Baboon asserted that he wouldn't play around anymore and urged Chen Ji Liao to be vigilant. Baboon and his two clones joined their swords, creating two spears with blades at each end. They thrust their swords into the ground, initiating a desolation strike. A storm of dark shadows surrounded Chen Ji Liao's body, and sword blades emerged from the shadows, targeting him. Chen Ji Liao skillfully avoided many blades, but some still struck him. The baboon laughed, stating that Chen Ji Liao couldn't dodge forever. Suddenly, the baboon appeared in front of Chen Jiao, and despite avoiding the shadow, he felt slashed by dozens of sword blades. The baboon threatened to find a good grave for Chen Ji Lao, but a white shadow quickly appeared behind the baboon, surprising everyone. It appears that the new arrival is Grandpa Albert. He stood right behind the baboon to block Chen Ji Liao's fist. With a calm look in his eyes, Grandpa Albert asked Chen Ji Liao to stop. The rain fell heavily, occasionally accompanied by thunder and lightning. Even under the cool rain, Chen Ji Liao's determination to defeat his enemy remained strong, despite his battered and cut body. Grandpa Albert once again instructed him to stop. Sally approached Chen Ji Liao and asked if the young man was okay. While massaging his wrists, Chen Ji Liao replied that he was fine. Grandpa Albert immediately asked the two young men to leave as a thunderstorm was imminent. The baboon laughed at Grandpa's attitude, claiming that he wouldn't let Sally and Chen Ji Liao go so easily. The baboon expressed anger shouting that if Grandfather hadn't interfered, he would have surely killed Chen Jialao. The system announced that Chen Jialao's mission was successful this time, as Babin, the shadow swordsmanship user, had been declared defeated. 
Chen Jilao earned 15,000 exp, a hidden key, and a map. Grandpa Albert urged them to leave before the impending thunderstorm. The baboons also realized the need to leave to avoid the storm's consequences. However, Babin refused to accept defeat and challenged Chen Jilao to continue the fight. He had to be dragged away by his men as he was determined for a rematch. Finally, Sally called Chen Jilao, asking him to leave immediately due to the worsening rain. Inside the wooden house, Sally applied medicine and advised Chen Jilao not to move too much. Sally thanked Chen Ji Lao and went out to help Grandpa Albert. She asked him to rest for a while. As Chen Ji Lao looked out the window at the heavy rain, he remembered the rainy day he entered the game and wondered about his mother's worry. Determined to return soon, Chen Ji Lao planned to start the next mission after the rain stopped. The system notified him that he had obtained a hidden key. Chen Ji Lao wondered what the key would open. Taking out the key, the system informed him that it could open chests of various colors, dropping randomly and containing gems and weapons. Grandpa Albert entered the wooden house and warmly greeted Chen Jie Liao. Grandpa Albert apologized for not having the chance to see Chen Jie Liao sooner. Due to the heavy rain, Grandpa needed time to shelter his plant seeds outside. Chen Jie Liao offered to help, and Grandpa Albert walked over to the bed where Chen Jie Liao was resting, asking if the young man was okay. Chen Jie Liao reassured the grandfather, mentioning that he only had a few lacerations. Curious about the relationship between the baboon and Sally, Chen Ji Liao asked Grandpa Albert. Exhaling smoke from his mouth, Grandpa Albert began to explain the complex history. Grandpa Albert recounted an incident ten years ago when he and Sally entered the Latinia area during heavy rain. Passing by a house, they witnessed a strange monster attacking the residents. The monster had a human body with claws and a wolf's head. Despite arriving late, Grandpa Albert managed to save the couple's child from the creature's attack. The monster... Realizing Grandpa Albert's strength, fled the village, leaving behind a crying boy mourning his mother's death. The child turned out to be a baboon. After that, Grandpa helped bury the baboon's parents and took care of the baboon. Chen Ju Lao now understood the background story between them, but he still didn't understand why the baboons seemed to consider Grandpa Albert and Sally as enemies. Grandpa explained that the baboon feels his purpose in life is to find the monster that killed his parents. The burly old man claimed to have persuaded the baboon to abandon his ambitions and live a good life in the city. Grandpa emphasized the diverse and unimaginable strength of various monsters in the Latinea desert. Even the monster that killed an old man, Grandpa Albert dared not say he could defeat, let alone a baboon. After that, the baboons left their homes, leaving Chen Jia Liao looking very serious. Listening to Grandpa's story, Chen Ji Lao thought that Grandpa Albert perceived the monsters as too powerful highlighting how terrifying these creatures were. When the conversation seemed sufficient, Grandpa Albert got up to leave, reminding Chen Jilao to rest. Chen Jilao was still deep in thought, realizing that even with the map, he would have to walk through the desert to find the temple, not knowing how many powerful monsters lurked in the Latinea desert. Moreover, he had been killed by one of the monsters there. Chen Jilao realized that with his current strength, he would probably be killed again by the monsters before reaching the temple. Chen Jilao concluded that he had to strengthen his own body first. Because of that, Chen Jiliao called Grandpa Albert, who was about to leave the house. Chen Jiliao asked Grandfather to teach him how to fight, expressing his desire to become stronger and find the shrine to live there. Grandfather Albert, still wearing a headscarf, advised the young man to take care of himself. Grandpa Albert stepped out of the wooden house. Chen Jilao didn't blame him for continuing to tell Grandpa that he was serious, and knew the way out of this place. Chen Jilao was worried that he was going too far, remembering Babin breaking up with Grandpa because of this. Suddenly, Grandpa Albert stopped walking and said that the thunderstorm would stop tomorrow. Chen Jiliao had to come to the mountainside the next morning if he could pass Grandpa's test. Grandpa Albert promised to teach him how to fight. Grandpa Albert concluded that it was possible that Chen Jiliao really could bring everyone out of this place. Chen Jia Liao, still standing in the doorway, was shocked when the system appeared and notified him about the daily quests. Chen Jia Liao realized that this was demonic training, but these additional status points were extremely important and there was no way he could miss them. So this young man hit the accept button for a daily mission, which must have been quite gruesome. The next day the sun was shining very brightly, and Chen Jia Liao had already carried out several missions on the mountainside, such as lifting a very large tree. He cursed in his heart because the system was so annoying and had not prepared a tool to lift his weight. Just at that moment, 
a girl called his name. It was Sally, who had come to bring breakfast for Chen Ji Lao. She came to the mountain, and not finding Chen Ji Lao in the wooden house, asked Grandpa Albert, who said that Chen Ji Lao must be on the mountainside. Chen Ji Lao received the food from Sally, and explained that Albert's grandfather said he would be willing to teach him how to fight. Sally thought it was a great thing, and wondered what ability Chen Ji Lao would awaken. Chen Jia Lao was slightly surprised to hear about this ability, because, according to him, he was just a healer. Was it possible that he could awaken another ability? Sally replied that it was possible because the chosen profession is bestowed by the gods. Chen Jia Lao's elemental attribute also needs to be given according to his ability, like Sally, who managed to awaken the fire element. Grandpa Albert has the lightning element, and the baboon has the shadow element. Each person's abilities are determined by their chosen profession, and elemental attributes are bestowed by the gods. Chun Ju Lao smiled upon hearing Sally's explanation. He wondered to himself and looked forward to what kind of elemental awakening he would receive. Sally explained that her real world consists of five continents. One of them is the continent of Porazis, which is the place of origin and the human race lives there. The place is rich in products and abundant trade is the hallmark of the continent. Even residents from other parts of the continent stop there to trade centered on the continent of Porazis. To the west is the continent of Megara, with many volcanoes and the Dragon Knight's hometown. Above is the eternal winter of the multi-seven continent, inhabited by giants and beasts rich in minerals. To the east is a continent filled with shady forests, namely the continent of Gamma. The elven race, with high magic power and various gigantic monsters, lives on this continent. To the south is the Tubitic continent, where the dwarves live with great weapon-foraging skills. The continent is also known as the end of the world. Sally, sitting in the shade of a tree, mentioned that legend has it. There is an endless sea that leads to the realm of the gods. It is said that crossing the sea will bring the travelers to the place where the gods live, granting them the greatest strength. Initially, Sally believed the sea and the gods were just fairy tales. However, after being trapped in the desert, she realized the truth of these legends. Suddenly, a deep voice interrupted, stating that he did not expect the two lovebirds to wake up earlier than him. It was Grandpa Albert who had just arrived. Sally excitedly approached him, and they walked hand in hand toward Chen Ji Liao. Grandpa Albert asked if Chen Ji Lao was ready to accept the test from him. Chen Ji Lao replied decisively that, of course, he was ready. Grandfather Albert created small lightning bolts from his palms, facing each other, and even generated magic circles from this power. Placing his palm on the ground, he advised Chen Ji Lao to fully feel the elemental flow to discern the presence of elementals. Grandpa Albert successfully created a sizable lightning bolt from the ground, amazing Chen Ji Lao. Explaining that he cast a teleportation spell to a beast colony in the Latinea desert, Grandpa Albert mentioned discovering the monster colony while out hunting. Drawing his sword, named Azil, which had accompanied him for decades, Grandpa Albert announced that after three days, he would unlock the teleport spell. If Chen Jilao used the sword to kill the Beast King, the King of Beasts, within three days and brought back its head, he would pass the test. Grandpa Albert warned Chen Jilao that once he awakened his elemental powers, he could use the true power of the sword. If Chen Jiliao chose to leave now, there might not be a chance to return. Chen Jiliao accepted the sword with a smile, expressing that he would not regret his choice and promising to bring back the Beast King's head. Standing above the magic circle, the system appeared and asked him to confirm the activation of the Beast King's revival quest. With confidence, Chen Jilao confirmed his new mission. The system also notified that the mission started, and the time allotted was 72 hours. Chen Jilao was immediately teleported to the location that Grandpa Albert had arranged. Watching Chen Jilao leave, Grandpa Albert contemplated that mastering elemental strength would be necessary to kill the Beast King, especially if the Orc colony had high resistance abilities. Elemental power, derived from understanding one's decisions, was crucial, and Chen Jilao needed to understand the decision first to obtain elemental powers. Chen Jialiao had landed in a gloomy and unfamiliar place, wondering if this was the quest location. The atmosphere was vastly different from the desert, with black sand and no sunlight. Undeterred, Chen Jia Lao decided to search for the monster colony's territory. Realizing that defeating the boss would be challenging if his level was far below that of the monsters, he opted to level up by defeating some monsters first. 
While checking around, he felt an attack from behind, but managed to jump and dodge the attack in time. Irritated, Chen Ji Lao confronted a huge monster with bat wings called Dotham, a level 20 monster, the most mysterious in the Latinia area. This young man tugged at the hilt of the sword, thinking that even without activating the elemental power, the sword could still be lethal. The method of using the sword depended on one's abilities, so he decided to test the sword immediately. Chen Jia Lao ran towards the monster, believing that by increasing his battle experience continuously, he would no longer be a rookie. According to him, facing any enemy would not instill fear in his heart, only an unlimited fighting spirit. Without hesitation, Chen Jia Lao swung his sword to slash every part of the monster's body, aiming to increase his experience and level. Despite the monster's attempts to attack with its tail, Chen Jia Lao dodged the attacks by jumping a few meters. Advancing again to attack the monster while slashing its tentacles, Chen Jia Lao found pleasure in conquering and becoming stronger. After dodging several times, Chen Jia Lao successfully stuck the sword blade, still wrapped in cloth, into the sea monster's body. He then swung the sword, splitting the monster's body into two. With that, Chen Jia Lao gained 35,000 exp and rose to level 17. Love the manhua? Subscribe for more. Your support makes it all possible. Hit subscribe now.